Hello, welcome to Equip2. I'm Paul Thompson, and today we're going to be running over the CBI 5400 downswing chipper slash grinder. This is where it all begins. Um, so basically, the running of the machine and everything can be done from here. Come standard with the remotes, same thing, so operations from there. Really nice, operator-friendly PCL board and functions. Um, so go into here and everything you can need uh, and want to know on the machine is in here. A really cool feature about the CBIs is actually around the wiring. So you'll see through here we come through um, for the wiring, for the harnesses themselves, they're actually all individual. Uh, so if you have any wiring issues throughout the machine, it's really easy to trace it, fix it, and get back to work. You'll see through here, um, they're running a 500 Grouser as standard. Um, they're a two-speed track system. Um, very, very heavy duty, so lasts the life of the machine. Um, the tracking wire side of them, or the functionality of that tracking side, is very, very impressive to see. Um, so they get along at a great rate of knots as far as speed goes. You'll notice here, they're, they're very, very heavy duty. So this is the in-feed of the machine. Um, so it, it's full width right through into the rotor at 48 inches. On the in-feed here, it's all an AR450 grade steel, so great longevity. You see the little entry angle here, so kicking the feed material in. And what a lot of our customers have stated is they love how this feed bed stays consistent height all the way through the infeed rather than tailing off and having spillage at the far end. This is the start of the hog box itself. So what you'll see here, this is our high torque infeed roller. Um, a lot of these teeth differ, so you've got some that are basically a straight triangle and then some with a hook formation. Now what this does is, it feeds the material into our rotor. The reason it has the hooks is to grab it and pull it in when it needs to, and the reason for the equilateral shaped triangle ones is to hold the material up, um, which the machine all does by itself, by the engine revs and the rotor speed. These machines have a feed integration process system. Now what that does is, is it all talks to each other itself. You can set it up for different settings, depending on the material you're feeding, um, the material you're producing, the speed of the rotor, the infeed, the speed of the infeed chains, all talk to each other uh, to get optimal performance for your machine. The number one feature that we believe that the CVI 5400 has is the rotor configuration. There are four different rotors that you can put into this machine. The rotor has a speed of RPMs of up to 1000. How this works is, is in a downward strike against an anvil. This is how you set the settings for your chip and sizings. This one here is currently set up with what we call a two pocket rotor, um, which is primarily for chip sizing from 19 through to 27 millimeters for uh, animal bedding or a biomass or biofuel size chip. Now, the cool thing is this rotor here can be removed by taking out these two panels and sliding up and then you can put in forged, a solid steel, or a four pocket rotor. So what those enable you to do is anywhere from demolition waste, producing a, a mulch slash hog fuel, a microchip, which is what a four pocket rotor does, which is from three mil to 12 millimeters, so primarily used for things like pellet production, and then up into uh, this one here, which is the two pocket rotor, the 19 to 27 millimeters. The fantastic thing about this configuration is, is the versatility of your machine. So you can go from one day doing chipping program, and then if you've got a chunk of hog fuel in front of you, do a rotor change out and then go through that system. This is a real key to the CBI 5400. The power source for these machines can be specified for different models. Um, they can come with a Scania V8. Um, this one here is come with a C18, and it's in a tier two format, and it's rated to 765 horsepower. As you'll see, this has the flex air fan system. This automatically purges and reverses to keep it nice and cool in its running formats. A lot of success out of these. At Equip2, we're actually specking these things standard from factory um, with the Honda onboard generator, around that 13 horsepower. Fantastic reason for this is, is for blowing the machine down. Wood chips and warm environments don't really go that great. Um, but also for running our tooling systems. So for any tools that we need for using things like changing knives, etc., can be all run off this. For the discharge on this side, we're running a 48 inch wide belt. It is speed variable, so you can go from dropping straight off the end of the belt into a pile there, or you can actually have it cranked right up to around that two meters a second and throw it into trucks or throw it a bit further away. For this machine here, we've actually fitted off with a sensor technic unit. Um, a lot of our customers in our aggregate side and our uh, chipping or grinding space 
like to know what they're producing. What this does is it measures volume coming off the belt, so a really accurate way for you to charge out for customers. As pointed out by our customers, they really like the ground clearance of the CBI machines. Um, gets a long way off the ground, just prevents that horrible awkwardness of, of hitting if you're going through a slash or a cutover. Gives you great clearance in there. As we all know with these machines, it's really important to protect yourself from damage from tramp metal or the likes from in the rotor. When you're going around at that um, up to a thousand revs, a bit of steel can do a lot of damage. CBI have a fantastic system to mitigate this. The first stage of that is a metal detection system and the sensitivity of that can be raised and lowered as you require. So if you are doing, say, demolition waste with a demo rotor, um, you might have that set quite low. Um, if you're in clean material, um, you can get that flown through quite well. So the first stage is, is the metal detection. It sends a ping and instantly stops the head uh, from spinning. So behind that again, which I think is a really important feature, is the shear bolt system. So if by chance, a bit of track metal hits that rotor exactly perfect. Um, it doesn't get a chance to stop it before doing damage. There is a shear bolt system which releases the rotor after that point. Really important thing to do your homework around these metal detection systems because they are vital to the, to the life of your machine. For the shear bolt system, what this does is it releases the grates at the backside or the screen media and that releases that steel, the track metal that's gone in there to prevent further damage going through. When the metal detection system pings and goes off, what it automatically does is shuts the rotor, raises up the hog box, and reverses out the chains. This makes it really easy for you to get in there, find out what set it off, get rid of it, and start producing again. 